Sometimes when you dance with the devil, don't be surprised when you get burned. And if you make a deal with the devil, you might end up having to sell your soul. When you go looking for controversy, controversy is going to come find you. And the WWE once again was taught this lesson this past Monday night on Raw. Now look, I was a huge proponent of the WWE bringing in LeVar Ball and his kids to be a part of the show on Monday night. I absolutely was. And I loved the segment. I had a blast. People thought it was a train wreck. Some people thought it was a train wreck and still enjoyed it. I loved every freaking minute of it, and I in particular loved how LeVar Ball, to me, put 90-95% to 95 of the rest of the roster to shame by showing you what a real talent, a real personality, real charisma, real mic skills actually fucking looks like. You know, that kind of organic feeling, if nothing else, you got out of that segment, you know the WWE didn't plan this out, because they wouldn't have been smart enough to, and they most certainly wouldn't have been talented enough to put together a quality segment involving the balls that would make logical sense, because, after all... You have Titus O'Neil, you have this Titus brand, which is clearly a parody of LeVar Ball, and we do nothing to have these guys interact. But of course, all of the talk about this segment ended up revolving around LaMelo Ball and his usage of the N-word, which was fucking hilarious in the way he used it and who he was talking about. It was classic. You know, nothing says awesome like LeVar Ball freaking shirtless standing around in the dang ring and somebody deciding to give a 15-year-old kid a hot mic on a live television show and waiting for the magic to happen. But of course, WWE soon released a statement talking about how upset they were and this wasn't part of who they are, this isn't a part of what they planned. And to me, this is all bullshit. Why is WWE mad at LaMelo Ball, LeVar Ball, Lonzo Ball, the Ball family, and for what LaMelo Ball said? Because if it's anybody's fault, it's the WWE's fault. You brought in LeVar Ball. What the hell did you think was going to happen? Have you not seen some of the things this dipshit has said? Have you not seen some of the things this dipshit has done? And you're surprised that something like this could follow onto your show? Where just a couple of months ago there was a big internet furor? Over him telling Kristen Leahy from Colin Cowturd's show to sit there and stay in your lane? This same LeVar Ball, and you're surprised when something like this would happen. Somebody in WWE, and ultimately, everything always funnels up to one guy and one guy only, that is Vincent K. McMahon. Only one person is to blame for this, and that is Vince McMahon. He's the one that signed off on bringing in LeVar Ball. He's the one that gave them television time. He is the one that gave LeVar and the two sons that were there a hot mic on a live television segment, instead of doing something that was more heavily scripted, where you could pre-tape it, you could go through it several times, um, where you could actually control the message, make sure everybody stayed on point, you put LeVar Ball in a situation where him and his family could potentially go into business for themselves and treat it like a joke, and that's exactly what the hell happened. So that's not LaMelo's fault, that's not LeVar's fault, that most certainly isn't Lonzo's fault, that's the WWE's fault. Ding dong, dumb dicks. You dance with the devil, you can get burned. You mess with the bull, you get the horns. You got exactly what the fuck you deserve. But furthermore, I don't understand why the WWE is so pissed off and upset about this. As I've talked about before, like all their outrage for blacklisting, choice of words there, uh, Hulk Hogan for his usage of the N-word repeatedly in a private conversation, all the while Donald Trump, uh, <laughs> somebody who was caught talking about how he grabs women by the pussy, and since he's famous, they let him do it. He's the president, mind you, but WWE still has him in their Hall of Fame. You have convicted rapists like Mike Tyson that the company celebrates. You have Superfly Jimmy Snuka, who everybody goddamn good and well knows in 1983 killed his girlfriend Nancy. You have Stone Cold Steve Austin, a freaking wife beater. This company celebrates him like he's the greatest fucking thing of all time. But LaMelo Ball drops the N-bomb twice on the show, and all of a sudden it's like World War III fucking armor again. Well, excuse the fuck out of me. It's this hypocrisy at its very fucking finest. For the WWE, who has a long, proud story tradition throughout its history of treating its non-white wrestlers, and this is not just black wrestlers, it is Asian, it is guys from the islands, it is uh, Mexican, Hispanic, Latin wrestlers, all of them. So many of them over the years have been, been treated poorly, given stereotypical, racist, uh, bullshit type of gimmicks presented in a certain racist, stereotypical, discriminatory, prejudicial, bullshit type of way. 
that if anything, you would think Vince and Hunter and those guys in the gorilla position would be cock cock con when they got to hear a, a young black man use the N-word because they're like, oh my god, I can't see it on live TV anymore, but they said it for me. God, I thought about it. Except for the fact this is the same company, and I don't give a shit what excuse you try to make about it being a different era. We were talking about a company that two decades ago allowed several members of DX to go on television in blackface. Thanks, Vince Russo. Fuck you. Same company that had their chairman, their CEO, founder, Vincent K. McMahon, go up to John Cena and use the N-word, and that was just supposed to be okay, right? Again, doesn't matter the fucking era, it is part of the history. Let's not even talk about all the racist or borderline shit Roddy Piper used to say in the 80s. Let's not even talk about the flat-out racist shit Greg the Hammer Valentine said in the 80s in his program with the Junkyard Dog. Let's not talk about how the fact in the WWE today, unless it's somebody like a Mark Henry, who they once were trying to call the fucking silverback, mind you, that they used to call sexual fucking chocolate. Let's not talk about the fact that almost every single freaking black male wrestler in that company has one of a few types of gimmicks. They either are some type of thug, see crime time, they're either some type of of smiling kind of almost Uncle Tom acting motherfucker and you would throw maybe Apollo Crews into that mix at that point in time. Just smile and look nice and say yes sir, no sir. Or they gotta dance and swing their ass. New Day, Rich Swan. They gotta sit there and rap, see our truth and others throughout the years. Or they got to sit there and act all types of suspect and be given just the gayest of gay fucking gimmicks like where even respectable gay people sit there and say, that's too gay for me. See the shit they're doing with Patrick Clark at freaking NXT? What the fuck is he? The Velveteen Fruit Stick? Like of all the shit you could bring him in, that's the crap that you bring him in. And surely they have saddled white wrestlers with those type of gimmicks, but not nearly to the length and severity and consistency that they have with in particular black wrestlers over the year. So excuse the fuck out of me, WWE. We can't sit there and get mad at a 15-year-old kid dropping the M-bomb twice on a hot mic on a live show that we gave him the platform to be able to do. When we celebrate convicted rapists, we celebrate, celebrate... Uh, people that we know are murderers. We celebrate wife beaters like Stone Cold, treat them like the greatest thing of all time. We have a president who is in, still in your Hall of Fame that you still talk about, even though you don't do it on TV necessarily, but you can still find him on the website. Even though he talked about grabbing women by the pussy and his history in the real estate business in terms of um, when he was a landlord, the way he acted towards black tenants, not good. Look at the history. Just saying. But we'll blackball a Hulk Hogan for the crap that he said. And we'll get mad about a LaMelo Ball, even though a Michael P.S. Hayes once said to Mark Henry that I'm more end than you, and we still allow him to be one of the most, create, most important creative voices in the damn company. This is the height of hypocrisy. This is the height of bullshit. What, because USA Network told you to do this? Or well, because you're afraid of the advertisers? No. WWE, don't act like you're mad. If anything, again, you'd be cock, cock, con, happy backstage laughing about it. Don't act like all of a sudden you care. Don't pretend like you're offended by this because you're not. That's bullshit. Because look at the way you treat your black wrestlers now. Imagine for those of you that think I'm just going on some Justice Warrior bullshit. Imagine if all the gimmicks they gave those black wrestlers, they gave them to all your favorite white wrestlers. Just think about that for a second. Think about how stupid that is, and how offensive that would be, and how much bullshit that would fucking be. WWE still thinks that every single black man in the world probably sags their pants, raps, shucks and jives, and acts suspect as shit. That's the way this company thinks. And frankly, if anything, they would want to put out there, you would think, based off of their history, a young black male to sit there and use the n-word so that way they can point and make some type of social commentary their goddamn selves and for all we know that's the fuck what they were hoping to do here they were trying to embarrass the ball family for their own freaking benefit for their own freaking jollies well they got bit by it a little bit you mess with the bull you get the horns you can't seek out controversy and then act like bitches when that controversy finds you this is vince mcmahon's fault and vince mcmahon's fault alone you stupid out of touch Fucking moron. 
how the hell could your company be surprised that something like this would happen? And worst of all, besides the fact of how you treat all your black wrestlers, how could you put these guys in a position where this was even a possibility to begin with? Why are you upset at LaMelo Ball? Be mad at your damn self.